And you know what? I think we have to call it right here. Who do you think Marsh is going to win? Do you think Sumu is going to close it out, or will it be Classic barely holding on for a final game? I think we're going to see Classic pull out something very special for the next game. I don't know what. I don't know how. I don't even know what the next map is, despite the fact that I'm in the thing. It's Newkirk Precinct. And we do have Newkirk Precinct for this, mm. and I love this map. When I first started getting into StarCraft, actually, not even when I first started getting into StarCraft, it was after I was in StarCraft for a while. This is the one map I remember playing a lot of random TBT on. I used to play Terran for a while, and I've always enjoyed its architecture and what it looked like. But it's going to be a very interesting map for air based styles, which you can see more so as an opener than anything else generally from classic mm. well i don't know i like i liked when he tried going into uh carriers and i'd like to see him try and do that again <laughs> well but um, yeah sue carriers, definitely seems carriers, to have his number to, on that you need to delay your opponent with your early mm. opener and then you need time on top of that oh. so if he can't do that he can go into carriers but with a style like that and i think i was talking about this at the beginning of the cast where it's a great style. In lower leagues, it can kill your opponent. But a style like that is all banking off somehow you've bought yourself time. While at this level, neither player is going to allow them their opponent to do that. A lot of games in, er in lower leagues can come down to vision, where someone doesn't really realize the opponent's doing that. And then your opponent all of a sudden has 10 carriers. But that's not at all how Sue plays, especially with his very... Uh, very solid scouting patterns that he'll do in the early game, getting yeah. his overlords in there and scouting what everyone's up to. And heck, he could even go overlord speed if he was really worried about it. All right, for those last people who haven't bought any tickets, do it now, do it now. Don't let those glasses go away. But yeah, uh, to your point, uh, I like Sue sees everything. He's got his overlords in the right position every time. He knows what's going to be coming his way. And Zerg... To be honest, very reactionary race uh, to begin with, and Sue plays that style very, very well. Yeah, I like his style, and on top of that, I really like how patient he is, where... ...for an engagement, but he's more patient where he realizes, you know what, it's not a big attack, I'm not going to be afraid and rush out a lot of lings, I'm going to defend on what I have right here, because if I want to end the game a little later, I don't want to force out lings right now. So he's very patient, and I, I think it's more that he doesn't scare easily, is actually what I want to go with uh, for with that, where on the defense, he doesn't force out too many lings, just forces out a couple, defends on what he has, and if, even if it takes him a while, even if it taxes his multitasking, he still defends and doesn't overreact in any way. So it's a very not-scared player in the end, but also, of course, he's fairly patient in a lot of the engagements. Yeah. By the way, guys, please donate on Matcherino. It will support these players, support us, and allow us to get more content out to you guys. Very much so. And uh, just to entice you uh, in order to do so, we've put a stretch goal in there. I believe it is $200, although despite the fact that uh, I said this last time and said I didn't know, uh, I haven't uh, confirmed this. So that's, that's just great. Very professional on my side. But I'm sure I will be uh, corrected by uh, our nice uh, chat mods in that case. For now, I'm going to say, let's get into uh, this game. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in the bottom right-hand corner of Newkirk Precinct. It is the blue Protoss player, down two to three. It is classic. His opponent, hailing from the ma land of the morning calm, it is Sue, going for what? Going for a pool first. It's not a 14-14. Looks like it's just a 14 pool into a possible natural. We'll have to see. So at first, I'd think his drone down to the natural would be to fake out a probe, like fake like you're going for that hatch. But that probe's not even going to be there yet, even if he did scout a little bit earlier. So overall, it's going to be a gasless opener into a natural. And he's going to try to clinch out the series with a very quick push on six lanes. Really generally hoping for Classic to go for the Nexus first like he has in two of the series, two yeah. of the games of the series. And I wonder whether Classic uh, suspects as much because he used, in every other game uh, so far, he's been building his wall on the natural. And here with that confirmation of that scout, by the way, he had that probe in position to, to take that natural. 
He says, no, nope, I'm building a Cybernex Core at the top. I've already got my Zealots going in there, and he's going to be in a very good position to hold this off. Yeah, on this map, you definitely don't often see it in the natural. Sometimes you can with a Nexus first into a double gate, but this is going to favor Classic far more than that. He does have the one Zealot out. A second one is on the way since he scattered his opponent. Even gets a probe there so the Lings can't wiggle through like sometimes they can. And really, it's going to come down to the control of Classic, whether or not he allows Sue in. While well, off the back of this, Sue takes a natural, gets his gas, and even though he hurts himself a little bit economically in this game overall, he has forced out a number of Zealots and will contain Classic on one base. Very much, and it's, uh, uh, it looks like Sue says, like, oh, that didn't really work uh, very well. Let's just go into drones, and he's now got two bases to start those drones off, so yeah not doesn't have the greatest economic start but uh, classic taking is natural at two minutes 50. Yeah, we'll have to see when he takes that yeah. yeah stargate will be his next option to try to get some damage done he can move in with an adept but looks like he actually did he cancel the, uh no he yeah, he cancelled the Adept that he had on the way earlier and is just on two Zealots. So we'll try to go for some Overlords with this Stalker. Try to push that back to allow his Oracle to move into Sue's main base unseen. But really right now he's kind of on the edge of his seat right here for Classic. Sue is one game away from victory, but more importantly has three chances to win against Classic. Uh, well, I'd only like to give him two chances of that, but uh, that's okay. If Sue oh, wants you know, pen... Math on stream. Seriously, math. you should Never know do better. Math on stream, my friend. They told me you were a professional. I I generally don't do maths on stream. I actually thought it through twice in my head and was like, yeah, three. He's got this game plus two more. I was like, oh, wait, if he wins this game, he puts him one game away. All right. Maths. They told me I was a professional. Really, they were, they were pumping me up too much. So you're taking that third base and getting that spore crawler for the... Uh, for the thing which inevitable that is the word i was looking for oracle to come in there it hasn't put one in the natural yet but with two queens you should be quite comfortable yeah there. yeah sue did go for an early extra third queen to help him spread creep down to that third base and hold it so it will be okay in the natural I'm curious where Classic moves from here, if he adds on a whole bunch of gates and goes for a frontal push, or decides to go into Robo. Generally, we have seen him add on more gates and stay on Tier 1 gateway units. Well, we've got two Oracles right there, and that means you guys missed the action of the first Oracle there, who did kill four drones. Which happened in the main, possibly. Hmm. Yeah, it, it, ha it did go in and was pushed back by the spore and queen plus one melee is on the way i like the heavy ling style that sue is kind of showing his hand with here all right uh we have moved on just one percent in uh, sue versus classic we've got a little uh, i suspect one more person uh, putting Ooh. in a vote there for for sue as those oracles oh, come in once again but the uh, queen is in prime wait a second not beautiful positioning queen goes down at first i liked it covering both sides of the mineral line but the spore needs to be in the middle middle and once again classic has found an opening in sue's defense he's found a little hole to poke himself through Yep, uh, Queen does very well defend against one Oracle. Two Oracles will take down a Queen, even if one of your Oracles is as damaged as that one. But, seven workers killed, not so bad. Could be worse. Yeah. He has done a lot worse. He's gotten back and won after uh, uh, losing a lot more to Classic in this game. Yeah. So... Moves around, looking for possible army, just kind of sending his lings around, trying to see if Classic moves out to catch it out of position. Checks for a third base in the north third, where Classic realizes his third base is in the central one and possibly wants to run by the main army, which would be at the third, but instead gets a beautiful surround on the main army. The Oracles are not back at home to deal with these lings, and there's simply not enough DPS for Classic to deal with all these lings right here. Plus one is not done yet, General. You would see Sue wait a couple moments, but he found a crime of opportunity. Moves into the third, does it the back but successfully manages to snipe a couple sentries and stalkers which are incredibly important on a big map like this where you need those force fields to take better engagements in the wide open yeah that was a very nice uh catch there right outside of the range of that photon overcharge and jumped on in there nice killer instincts right there and forces uh classic to reinvest some of that gas into the sentries and that's not really something you want to do 
Oh, double Oracles come in once again, accruing a total of 11 kills. Work on that gas little one Oracle does go down, but Classic is able to utilize these so well in all the stories of each of these games with Classic doing horrendous amounts of damage, but unable to finally put the nail in the coffin against Sue. Oh, another run Lake's by moving on once the again, third. and there's nothing here to defend. The sentry's not in the right position to get a force field. Fantastic, I love that. A Ling, a Ling. Why are you not moving? Oh, that was a horrible reaction of Classic there. He must have been uh, very busy somewhere else, and I'm assuming it's wherever he lost that second Oracle. But that cost him dearly. Great pressure from Sue. He he tested the main army. He sent one Ling to attack the... I call it a main army. It's four Zelts and a Sentry. Realized they're out of position. Moves into the mineral line. Classic is trying to defend, and both players have inflicted heavy amounts of damage onto each other. 13 workers killed on one side of the 10 of the other. But that's far more even economically than Sue has ever had in these PBZs. He has Hydras on the way. He's got all the upgrades for them, too. And Classic is getting Storm, but Sue's attack should hit a little bit quicker than Classic's defense, especially with all the creep that Sue has spreading across the map. And we've got Classic once again going into that Storm tech. A little bit earlier than last time, I do believe. So he's got three High Templars right now yeah. uh, starting he, to build up energy. He's got such a weak army, though. His army cannot take a direct engagement. It has to stay on the defensive, where Sue could just contain Classic for a while if he wanted to. Classic is trying to get a warp prism out, though, to get some counter aggression in to continue his harass, but Sue isn't giving him enough time. You have Banelings ready to crash into the third base, having not seen those gateways yet, and Lings and Hydras going for surround on the right hand side. Uh, with the first log on overcharge right there, uh, staying the hand of Sue just a little bit. Or more likely, Sue just making sure that uh, that energy is already taken. No, does actually commit to that, and here comes the Ooh, Bane some nice train. choke points set up by Classic right here. Banelings on the left-hand side do kill the wall, but we see a quick warp and High Templars in a precarious position. But finally, the storms are out, and there's just not quite enough damage to break on through the self and the Immortals. Classic set himself up a perfect position to defend in some of these choke points. 30 more Lings are coming out for Sue, but it's looking like he just does not quite have the DPS against the High Templars themselves combined. Everything right here, Charter's not done yet, but Classic's defensive wall has been destroyed in the second wave from Sue may be able to break through. We'll see how quickly his 30 lings come out and rejoin Sue's main army. Yep, yep. that was a very nice wraparound. I don't know what he did out there, but it was even better defense on the side of Classic. Although it really was his set. setup with the buildings. Yep. Don't move out of position. Nope. Be careful. Don't, There's don't no sentries there. this time. There's not that extra force field yet. Oh, there is, however, oh, Psionic Storm right there. Pretty also sometimes called offensive force field, and I very much agree with that statement. And now there's not enough of two left to face up against an army that Classic has uh, chasing him down. Although I don't know if you want to attack that. Nope, that Zealot uh, survives that just fine. Ooh, looking, uh, using a little bit of a contaminate there, making sure that that next Immortal isn't coming out just yet. But I like, for Classic at least, those two uh, Immortals surviving that onslaught just barely in the case of one of them. Yeah. Sue's attack is starting to wane. He does have plus two melee, but he needs some armor to accompany this against these storms, especially. Looks like he finally will get rid of Classic's Observer, which is told Classic each time when Sue has moved out to be aggressive. But Classic is, I what I was going to say for a second is double expand, but this is a very interesting ex expansion. It's incredibly exposed, and it will pull him far away from his third base to defend it. But it's it's up yeah. to him. We'll see how that works out with Sue angling up in the north part of the map to attack that fourth. And Classic's got that War Prism uh, ready uh, just below the main base or to the east of the main base, ready to drop in those charged zealots whenever a Sue moves out too far. But why this base? Seriously, why? What are what are the advantages of this base? And obviously there must be good ones because uh, Classic is a pro player and far better than me. But what well, at least for now, Classic <laughs> is in a strong position after rebuking both of those waves, waves one and two, and all, you know, I'll almost say three in total, where he's in a strong position where he can continue to push, and Sue doesn't quite have the tech to actually deal with Classic's arm, but still is a little bit iffy, especially if he puts himself out like this, but this is the story of Classic all throughout this best of seven. He gets himself into good positions, where before he was not, and then just kind of runs in and is in, is in an awkward place when he's super exposed. 
but at least he is a little bit closer to the third though to jump over and come to the defense even if he has his third base exposed check that fourth base exposed a little bit more all right let's see where those banelings are going to run into that is going to get taken out to just fine it's just one oh Whoa, at the same time not just distracting classic distracting me as well taking out 12 probes in that recently finished fourth yeah. uh base very nice play the same time, do note in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, Classic has his Warp Prism ready, yet the Spores have pushed it back a couple times. It has tried to move in, realized they were there, and pulls out. The name of the game here is going to be Creep Marsh. Look at Classic, so check that. Sue's Creep that's moving across the map. Mm -hmm. If he gets one more round of tumors in, he's going to be incredibly close to use it as a springboard to simply run into the fourth base of Classic. Yeah, speed banelings hard enough to deal with on their own, but if they're... Oh, wow, you want to... Oh, here we go. So many right Archons, though, a oh. total of eight, and we also have a lot of storms going down, but the army of Classic is kind of broken up, but Sue runs headlong into a number of storms, and if there's a second wave that would be perfect but the initial attack is just just destroyed oh, oh, there's no God. more storms left to accompany this army though classic realizes it and starts to push out across the map he wants to end the game right now he's got to be careful though not to get caught out completely out of position and he will pull back a little bit since 46 limbs are on the way especially being on creep like that doesn't even have an observer there to start Ooh, cleaning it up because sue knows everywhere he sets foot and yeah. that's just not comfortable as a player coming up against a Zerg player. If yeah. Don't want to give you... your opponent that much information. You really need more Hydras and a bit more of a concave here. And this is a map where you can get those really big concaves to happen, but he attacks in these little clumps and they just get wrecked, especially when they're running into Immortals or Archons or into those. While Storm is on top of them, he doesn't have the ability to hold a position while he's attacking and just kind of dissolves after each attack. Yep, a third uh, attack upgrade just finished for a classic. And now I'm going to go uh, for some of the defense against those Banelings. Putting that zealot in a very nice position, making sure he can actually see what's going to come over that side where the Zeus creep is and gives him full range of attack options right there. And that is oh, a very nice tension right there. Before he even engages, looks like the Archons at the front will go down. We also have an attack on the right hand side. Could be the perfect mobile horn attack. But with so many Archons, he's just not being allowed to push through. Sue never gets the prime amount, especially as you can see he's on 80 workers. That's 20 less supply of Hydras, Orlings, or Banelings that he's having in each of these engagements. It's just going downhill. And now the classic is uh, free to get on into this. Uh, I'm not going to do math on stream. This base uh, takes it out there. Sue is not even there to defend it as he was warring in more Banelings. But here we go, moving in once again on those Immortals and Archons and those are just not what you want to be the putting your Banelings on. Banelings are great against uh, Adepts, they're great against Zealots, especially those Charge Zealots that just voluntarily go to their doom, but Archons... no. <laughs> Classic's posturing in the middle of the map while going for his first Zealot run by in the north position. This may provide Classic a little bit of a relief from pressure to clean up creep in the middle, which is exactly what he's doing while Sue is still moving around in the north position where he's very much out of position. He is going to try to defend that if Classic moves into it, but as the game goes on, Classic sees in a little bit better of a position. He's at 3 plus 3, 1, while Sue's at 2-2. Two, two. He will want to get more upgrades on the way, but his incredibly gas-heavy composition is making it a little bit hard to invest in that late game. But hey, why have to invest when you have so many Archons? That's very true. And Pretty versatile. Got... Oh, Ooh, we'll see. very nice narrow hallway here. Very much to the strength of Protoss as we go in once again with all those bailings. They get shredded by the storm and then uh, burst against the Archons. Which, as I mentioned, not the greatest thing. And now we have... Oh, there's more Banelings right there. But don't worry, we have more Archons. Oh, huge storm on the drones. GG! Classic evens it up. Oh. Uh, this game, and e even in the beginning of that game, we just kept see Sue crashing on the rocks of Classic. He just kept crashing against him. And one thing towards the later part was being at 84, 85 drones. That is 15 supply. But each time those 15 supply would be the extra Hydras in with the main army. And it's, it gets so dicey towards the end of how cost inefficient Sue's style is against Classic, who's very careful and patient with his building placement when he's on his third and then when he's on his fourth and really just has some immaculate defenses set up 